provides us with additional options that are not available via the ruler. Let's reopen the Page Layout dialog box and make some further modifications to this document. Since this involves procedures with which you're already familiar, please pause the tape now and complete interactive exercise number four in your workbook. I'll see you when you're finished. Welcome back. If you properly completed the interactive exercise, the top of your memo should now look something like this. Our document is starting to shape up nicely, but it might look even better if we centered the company name and address at the top of the page. To change the alignment of text, we must first select it. So let's highlight our company name and address. Now we'll change the alignment by opening the text menu then selecting Alignment. The Alignment sub-menu appears, displaying four options, Left, Center, Right, and Justify. Left will align text to the left margin. Center will place text equal distance from the left and right margins. Right will align text to the right margin. Finally, Justify We'll add spaces between words to make the text line up evenly with both the left and right margins. We want to center the heading, so we select Center by clicking on it. And the selected text is centered. In addition to the alignment menu, we can also apply either left or center alignment using the Smart Icon bar. If we look to the left of the ruler icon, we see two buttons. The first, which shows several lines of text lined up on the left, is the Left Alignment button, and to its right is the Center Alignment button. With the text still selected, if we click on the Left Alignment button now, the text returns to being left aligned. Let's move it back by clicking on the Center Alignment Smart Icon. To deselect the text, press the right arrow key. The next thing we want to do to our document is insert the name of the staff members who will be receiving a copy of this memo. To do this, we'll be working with a second document that contains the list of names. This way, we can simply copy the names from the second document, rather than recreating the list from scratch. First, to copy the list, we need to open the second file. To do this, we click on the Open Smart Icon. When the open dialog box appears, we type staff and press enter. In a moment, the staff document appears in the document window and our memo is no longer visible. Our original document is not gone, it's only hidden. If we open the window menu, we see the names of the two files at the bottom. Both files have a number to the left of them and the staff file has a check mark next to it, indicating that it is currently active. If we wanted to switch back to viewing meeting four, we could click on its name in the list or press one. Let's do so now. And our memo reappears on the screen. AmiPro allows us to have as many as nine files open at the same time. Currently, we're set up to view only one file at a time. However, to view both of the open files at the same time, we open the Window menu and select Tile. In a moment, both of the open files appear on the screen. Now that we can see both documents, let's select the list of names in the Staff file and copy them to the Meeting file. First, we need to switch to the Staff file by clicking anywhere on it. Now, we need to copy the names to the clipboard. To do this, we highlight the names. Then we click on the Copy Smart Icon. Next, we switch back to our memo by clicking anywhere in its window. To view only this document, we click on its Maximize button, which is the small arrow pointing upward in the upper right corner of the document window. In a moment, the memo fills the screen. Now we press Control-End to move to the end of the document. 
Then we press enter twice to leave some blank space. Next, we type the heading CC for carbon copy. Then add a colon. Now we press tab. Then we click on the paste smart icon to insert the list of staff members into our file. And our document is complete. We're finished with our work in this segment, so let's save our work and exit the program by pressing Alt F4. And a Save Changes prompt appears for our Meeting 4 document. Since we want to save the changes, we click on the Yes button. And in a moment, we'll return to the Windows screen. In this segment, we learned how to change margins and tab settings using both the Page Layout dialog box and the ruler. We also learned how to change the alignment of selected text and how to copy and paste between two open documents. Please pause the tape now and complete the additional exercises and quiz in your workbook. When you're ready, we'll continue on to segment five, in which we'll learn how to spell check the document and explore the use of headers and footers. Over the last few segments, we've learned how to create, edit, and format an AmiPro document. In the process, we've produced a memo that's just about ready to be sent out. Before we do, though, it might be a good idea to add some finishing touches. For example, in this segment, we'll check the memo for spelling errors, then we'll add a header and footer that will appear on every page. Finally, we'll insert a date code into the document, then actually print it out. If you're working along with me, you should have AmiPro up and running. To begin this segment, we'll open a copy of our memo called Meeting 5. To do so, we click on the Open Smart icon. Then double-click on the Meeting 5 file in the file name list. And in a moment, the memo appears on the screen. AmiPro's spelling utility is a sophisticated tool that checks the spelling of thousands of words and allows us to create custom dictionaries for specific words that are not in common usage but which we use frequently, such as a company name. Let's take a look at the AmiPro spell checker by opening the Tools menu and selecting Spell Check. And the Spell Check dialog box appears. In the top of this dialog box are two checkboxes, which we can select to tell AmiPro to start the spell check from the beginning of the document and to include all of the text streams contained in the document. Underneath are two buttons we can use to modify the language options and edit the dictionary. On the right are the familiar OK and Cancel buttons, along with an Options button. Let's click on the Options button now and the Spell Check Options dialog box appears. Here we see four options. Check for repeated words tells AmiPro to search through the document for any words that appear twice in a row. Check words with numbers will tell AmiPro to look at words that contain numbers. If this selection is not checked, AmiPro will skip any word that has a number in it. Check words with initial caps refers to checking words whose first letter is capitalized, such as the first letter of a sentence or the name of a city. Include user dictionary alternatives tells AmiPro to give us a few suggestions whenever it finds a word that we may have misspelled. Let's turn all these options on by clicking next to any option that is not currently checked. Then we click on OK and we'll return to the Spell Check dialog box. For now, let's return to the document by clicking on Cancel. We can easily check one word in our document by highlighting it and starting up the Spell Checker. To test the Spell Checker on a word that we know is misspelled, let's move to the end of our document by pressing Control-End. 
Now, we'll position the mouse pointer on the word please in our postscript line. Then we double click to select it. Now we could check the spelling by clicking on the tools menu and selecting spell check, but it would be quicker to use the spell check smart icon, which displays a book with the letters A, B, C on it. If we click on this smart icon, a spell check dialog box appears. In the upper left, we see the misspelled word, please, under which is the phrase, replace with, and a box displaying the highlighted misspelled word. Below this box is a list of alternatives. These are words which Amipro has found in its dictionary that closely match the spelling of the highlighted word. On the right of this box are six buttons. The top two that are currently grayed out allow us to replace the word with the text entered in the Replace With box. Below these two buttons are Skip All and Skip. Selecting Skip All will tell Amipro to ignore every occurrence of this word in the current document. Skip tells Amipro to skip only this occurrence of the word. The Add to Dictionary button will add this word to our dictionary so that it will not be flagged in the future. And the Cancel button will abort the spell checking process. The very first word in the Alternatives box is Please. Since this is the word we want, we'll select it by clicking on it. The word Please instantly appears in the Replace With box, and the Replace All and Replace buttons become active. Selecting Replace All will replace all occurrences of the misspelled word with the word contained in the Replace With box. However, choosing Replace will replace only this occurrence of the word. Let's click on Replace. The dialog box closes. The main document reappears, and the misspelled word is corrected. To spell check our entire document, all we need to do is start up the spell checker without highlighting any particular words. Let's try it. We click on the spell check smart icon, and the spell check dialog box appears. We want to make sure that a MePro starts from the beginning and checks the entire document. So we need to check both the Check from Beginning of Document and the Include Other Text Streams checkboxes. Then to initiate the spell checking process, we click on the OK button. In a moment, a dialog box appears displaying the first misspelled word. In this case, it happens to be part of our company address, and it is already spelled correctly. So, we'll click on Skip All to ignore all occurrences of this name and continue with the spell check. To complete spell checking this document, please pause the tape now and complete interactive exercise number five in your workbook. I'll see you when you're finished. Welcome back. Now, it might be nice to have certain information appear at the bottom of each page, beneath the text area, such as the page number or file name. This kind of text is referred to as a footer, while text that appears at the top of a page is called a header. To view the footer section of the document, we open the Edit menu and choose Go To. And the Go To dialog box appears. From here, we can jump to many different places in the document, including a specific page, the first page, the last page, or a particular item such as a bookmark, a footer, and so on. To move to the footer area, we highlight footer in the list of items. And then we click on the Go To button. And the cursor jumps to the footer area, which is the blue area right beneath the bottom margin of page one. Here we can enter any text we want simply by typing it in. To insert page numbers, however, we click on the Page menu and select Page Numbering. The Page Numbering dialog box appears. At the top of this box is the Style box, 
where we can select from several number styles, including Roman numerals, Arabic numbers, or letters.